Welcome to Revelation Unraveled. I'm your host, William Tapley, also known as the Third Eagle of the Apocalypse and the co-prophet of these end times. This will be part three in my series on that amazing end times prophecy, which I just recently discovered in Jeremiah chapter number 23. And no one has ever understood that that chapter is an end times prophecy. And that's because they did not understand that Jeremiah sealed it up, just like Daniel, Ezekiel, and John did in their prophecies, through means of a hidden verse structure. And in this case, Jeremiah used a cryptogram, very much the way John did in the book of Revelation. And the title of this chapter should be, Woe to the Pastors, because that's the very first words that Jeremiah uses. And... The pastors Jeremiah is referring to are the false Protestant prophets, the false Jewish prophets, and the false Catholic prophets. And if we look at Jeremiah's cryptogram, it's very interesting because you'll see that on the top line, the verses read 1, 6, 11, 16, etc. And the top line is primarily aimed at the false Protestant prophets. And we went over that in parts 1 and 2 of the series. Today, on this part, I want to go over the second line, which is primarily a warning to the Jewish false prophets in Israel. So let's review verse 2, which I did talk about a little bit in part 1. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of Israel. Now, this is different than verse 1, where God is called the Lord of Righteousness. And this is the sure indication that this second line of Jeremiah's cryptogram is directed at the Jews in the modern nation of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. This is Jeremiah's clue that he is talking about the Jewish people. My people, that's the same phrase that Daniel used. It refers to God's chosen people. You have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, says the Lord. Now, driving away and scattering means that the false rabbis in Israel have driven the Jews away from the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, by contrast, a true Jewish prophet like Natan says that Israel can still save itself by teaching Torah and practicing good works. In other words, the rabbis must bring the Jews back to God rather than scattering the Jews. And that phrase, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, that is the first of 12 punishments listed by God in 23. And it responds to the very first phrase, woe upon the pastors. Verse 7, therefore behold the days are coming. This is another reference that Jeremiah is talking about the end times. Says the Lord that they shall say no more, the Lord lives, who brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Now the they, in this case, refers to the false rabbis who no longer acknowledge the God of Israel who brought the chosen people up out of Egypt. In other words, they do not teach the Torah, which Natan says they must teach if they want to save Israel. Now, this description of God as the one who brought the children of Israel out of Egypt is further proof that this line 2 of Jeremiah's cryptogram is a prophecy about the false prophets in Israel. Verse number 12, Wherefore their way, the false rabbi's way, shall be as slippery ways in the dark, for they shall be driven on and fall therein. For I will bring evils upon them the year of their visitation, says the Lord. Now, bringing evils upon them, this is an expansion of the evil, which was mentioned in verse number 2, because God tells the fake rabbis when the evil will be visited upon them. It will be a specific year of their visitation. And the question is, is that this year? 
according to Natan, it has to be either this year or next year. That is the year of their visitation that Jeremiah is prophesying, prophesying about to the modern nation of Israel. So this prophecy of Jeremiah to Israel is the same as that Jewish teenager, Natan. And I'm sure that's why God wants me to unseal this prophecy of Jeremiah at this time. Verse 17, they, Jeremiah is still talking about the Jewish rabbis in Israel of today, say unto them that blaspheme me, the Lord has said you shall have peace. Now the fake rabbis in Israel blaspheme God by saying that all they need to do to secure peace is to procure more weapons. Natan, on the other hand, says that they need to read the Torah. And Jeremiah agrees with Natan. The false rabbis are feeding the Israelis pillows and cushions. Let's take a look at Ezekiel's prophecy, which is the same as Jeremiah's. Thus says the Lord God, Woe to them that sow cushions under every elbow and make pillows for the heads of persons of every age to catch souls. And it's amazing to me that Jeremiah made this prophecy about the modern nation of Israel 2,500 years ago. And of course, Jeremiah was inspired by the Holy Spirit. Now let's go back to verse 17 of chapter 23. And they say to everyone that walks in the perverseness of his own heart, No evil shall come upon you. Now perversion in this verse, just like most places where that word is found in the Bible, refers to homosexuality. And Israel has spent hundreds of millions of dollars to promote Tel Aviv as the gay capital of the world. And the pillows and cushions which the rabbis in Israel are feeding to them is that they don't have to worry about what God did to Sodom and Gomorrah. They can promote homosexuality all they want. And of course, that will bring about their downfall. So this prophecy of Jeremiah on line two of his cryptogram to the modern nation of Israel is amazingly accurate. And it corresponds with what John says in the book of Revelation. And that is that Jerusalem has become a Sodom and an Egypt. Notice that there are two errors by the false rabbis in Israel. They prophesy peace to Israel when they should be warning about war. And they say Israel can overlook the sin of homosexuality. Verse number 22. But if they had stood in my counsel and had made my words known to my people, notice that phrase, my people, Four of the five times the word my people are found in this chapter, we find them on this second line of the cryptogram. And making my words known to them, that means that the rabbis should be telling the Jews to follow the Torah, just as Natan says. Then they would have turned from their evil way and from their wicked doings. Notice the two things in this verse correspond with the two things in the last verse. They must turn from their evil ways and wicked doings. The evil ways refers to the Jews believing they can obtain peace without repentance, and wicked doings refers to homosexuality. Now this relationship between verse 17 and verse 22 is only understood through Jeremiah's cryptogram, and it proves that this is how you must unseal Jeremiah's prophecy. In other words, the false prophets in Israel should be reminding the Jews that God sent fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah, and they should be warning Israel about the imminence of the Daniel 9 war, which is what Natan is warning them about. Verse 27, Who seek to cause my people, notice that phrase, my people, the Jewish people, to forget my name by their dreams. Now this is very interesting. Jeremiah uses the word dreams for the false Jewish prophets, whereas for the false Protestant prophets, he used the word visions. And that's a very interesting comparison, and I want to get into that in a few minutes. Which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers forgot my name for Baal. And their fathers, of course, refers to the 
ancient Israelites of the Old Testament. Now, as I say, that phrase, my people, is found primarily on this second line of the prophecy. And the only other place where you find that phrase is in line 3 of Jeremiah's cryptogram, verse number 13. And there, Jeremiah explains what the word means. He says, my people, Israel. And now let's notice that on the next verse, verse number 32, which follows verse 27 only on the cryptogram, we find another reference to dreams that ties these two verses together. Verse 32, Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, says the Lord, and tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their boasting when I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore they shall not profit this people at all, says the Lord. Now, not profiting the people is not exactly a woe. It's not one of God's chastisements because of the false prophecies, but it is a consequence to the rabbis preaching pillows and cushions to the Jews. So now what's interesting, as I said before, is that Jeremiah says that the false Jewish prophets have dreams or claim to have dreams, and the false Protestant prophets claim to have visions. And this goes back to Joel, where he said that in the end times, your young men shall have visions and your old men shall have dreams. And that's because the youngest of the three denominations in Jeremiah chapter 23 are Protestants. And the eldest denomination would be the ancient Jews. Now that does not mean that Jeremiah is saying that any time someone on YouTube says they've had a dream, that that necessarily means that they are Jewish. All he is doing is separating these two to further verify that line one is about the Protestant prophets, therefore he says they claim to have visions, and line two is about the false Jewish prophets who claim to have dreams. And incidentally, as a side note, this distinction between the eldest and the youngest is also made by Daniel in his chapter 11, verse number 31, where he says the three groups that will be saved from the Antichrist are Edom, Moab, and Ammon. Now, Edom was a redneck, and that symbolizes the Catholics who will be protected and flee into the desert. They will be sunburned in the desert, so to speak. Moab was the son that Lot had by his eldest daughter, and thereby symbolizes the eldest denomination. That's the remnant of Israel who will be sealed by the prophet Elisha and flee into the Mount of Olives, which is split open. And Natan refers to that in his vision. Amon is the son which Lot had by the youngest daughter, and therefore he represents the raptured Protestants, and they are the youngest of these three denominations. And I have said many times on this program, the three groups who will reign with Jesus during the millennium, along with the holy martyrs, are the raptured Protestants, the protected Catholics, and the converted Jews. And what Jeremiah is warning about here in his chapter 23 is that even though a remnant of those three denominations will be saved, all three denominations will also bring forth false prophets in these end times. And Jesus said there would be many false prophets, most of them coming in his name, which means they claim to be Christians. But here on line two of the cryptogram, we are finding the false Jewish prophets are also very dangerous. In the end times, all three types of pastors are going to have woe brought upon them by Almighty God. He describes 12 different woes in this chapter, which God will visit upon his false prophets. Verse 37, Thus shall you say to the prophet, that would be all the false prophets, What has the Lord answered you? And what has the Lord spoken? Well, this is very interesting. Now, God is speaking to Jeremiah when he says, you. But Jeremiah is long gone. Consequently, since we know this is an end times prophecy, God is talking to you and me. That's what he means when he says you. And we have a job to do. We have to confront the false prophets here on YouTube. You should be confronting each one, and what you say to them is very simple. 
what has the Lord spoken? You have to challenge them, and that's what I'm doing. I'm challenging here not only the false Protestant prophets, but today the false Jewish prophets. And it's very simple. What we say to them is, what has the Lord spoken? In other words, not what you have fabricated in your minds or in your visions or in your dreams. And I guess I will stop here. And that reminds me, on my website, you can now, let me get this chart. I hope I can get it here without upsetting my screen too much. You can download Jeremiah's cryptogram, and you can follow the verses as they should be read. You can look ahead and look and tell me what you think when you read Jeremiah's chapter verse, chapter number 23 in its correct order. And if you would like more information about my mission here on YouTube, visit my thirdeaglemedia.com website.